Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and it's that time of year again where I go over what's on my iPhone, as many of you have asked. So this is what's on my iPhone and iPad for late 2021. And this video has been sponsored by the Fly app. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Now, the first thing is my main home screen. As you can see, if you've been following me for any period of time, things have not changed too much. And I really should change this up and plan to do that before the end of the year, since this has been fairly static and is kind of kept this way based on the way I use the phone and due to muscle memory. Now, as you can see, the top three rows are all Apple apps and Apple widgets or an Apple widget. I have the clock at the top with phone next to it. The phone is at the top because I don't use it that much. So I really don't make a whole lot of phone calls. I mostly use text messages and more. And then I have photos, the camera and the weather widget. I like to have the weather on the main screen. I like the widget. It gives me easy access into the current weather situation. And I think it just looks nice. Then on the next row, I have reminders, app store maps and home. And while I use Apple maps, I do like the way it looks better than Google maps. However, Google maps is still my go-to when I'm using navigation on my phone on my screen though, you'll see, I have the notes app. I personally have not found a better notes app that works better for me anyway. And the reason I say this is I put all of my ideas, all of my different outlines and maybe different sort of shots I need for B roll when filming a video, when you see video that doesn't look like this, but rather maybe I'm scrolling past the back of the cameras or something like that. I put all of those different things in the notes app, and then they seamlessly sync between the iPhone, the iPad and my Mac. And they're just available at any time. When I go to bed at night, maybe I have an idea. I'll put it in there and then fill it in, in the morning. So it just makes it really easy. Then I have settings Then I have a church app with Bible services and elevation. Then I also have social networking where I have telegram and discord. I have a telegram and discord server. Some of you are on it, but we're typically just discussing things such as what's going on with iOS, different iPhones, anything from cars to whatever you'd like to talk about. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it in the description. Also, I have Gmail and I keep Gmail separate from the regular email app. And that's because Gmail is handled in the Gmail app. All of my other email addresses are in the mail app, such as my Zolotech address, as well as iCloud. Then I have Amazon pretty simple and straightforward. And then YouTube, of course, where I can watch YouTube, but also manage this channel with YouTube studio. That's something I use all the time to reply to comments and more. And I really like the way it works. They keep improving it and I use it every single day, multiple times per day. So it's nice to have it right there. Now, a lot of people have said, why do I have a Tesla app? Well, for any of you that have been following me for a long period of time, you'll know that's the car I drive. So this acts as not only the controls for the car, but also the key It uses Bluetooth and acts as the key to the car. If you go into the app, we'll let it load. You'll see there's my car. There's the name. You can change it at any time. It's a new long range model S and it gives you all the different controls and things where you can open the front. You can check out the charging port here where you can change the charge limit and more. So it just lets me control it, even summon it, bring it to me. And it's something I use all the time from time to time when I need to change the time, let the charge limit, or maybe just warm up the interior or cool it down. It makes it really simple. Now also at the bottom, of course, social media, such as Instagram, Twitter, Google, and overcast for podcasts. It's a great podcast app. I find that I go back to it over and over. So you can just sort of speed through it jump through different parts of the podcast and speed it up. I just like the way it looks and it seems to work the best. And then of course the apps I use all the time, messages, Safari, mail, and music. Now on the second page, it's arranged a little bit differently. I have things arranged in apps that I use sometimes, and then also apps that I'm trying out. So it's not used maybe as much as the first page, or I'm trying out an app to see if it belongs on my first page. And this video is brought to you by fly. The fly app is a new social media app and it allows you to have a 3d model of an interactive city where people are posting about it in real time. So as you can see, this is New York city and maybe we go over, let's zoom out here. You'll see it's a 3d model. We'll zoom in to the statue of Liberty where there's a bunch of different people interacting. So maybe if we zoom in here, 
you'll see there's a post here. We'll tap on it, and it says Boat Cruise Party. So someone took a video of the Statue of Liberty and posted it there. So you have that nice option, and as people post around here, of course, it shows up, and you can have them interact with it. And then on the Statue of Liberty itself, if you tap on it, it will give you information about it. And they also have a giveaway going on, and they typically have giveaways going on. And in this case, you can win a PlayStation 5 or one of five separate $200 Visa gift cards. All you have to do is take a photo of a place that you like and say, hashtag, I love this place in your post and the best photos typically win. And so you have that interactive city and it's cities all across the world. I was able to see my local city, Charlotte. You can see you can zoom way out from New York City, zoom in. And as you zoom in, you can see it'll take just a moment. There we go. You'll see different people posting at different locations. So You'll have different people posting and you can see what they're saying in those locations. So maybe you're at a place nearby, you can see what's going on as people post. So it's a nice little app. Again, you have that giveaway here if you want to check that out and go to the Statue of Liberty, post a photo, and you can have a chance to win those. Be sure to check out the Fly app in the description below and thanks again to them for sponsoring this video. Now, again, on the second page, you can see I have a couple different things. I have the voice memos app, Amazon again, which is duplicated. I need to get rid of that. Find My, which I do use typically, as well as Magnifier Shortcuts WhatsApp, which I typically don't have on my phones, but I need it to communicate with some people, so I've left it there. If we go to the next page, you'll see I have some widgets that I typically just leave there that I play around with new widgets and different widgets. I find that I don't use widgets too often for some reason. I really don't use them that much. And then on the next page, this is the app library and this is what I use the most. If I'm not using an app on my main or secondary screen, I typically leave it here because it auto organizes. And you'll see here's a newer app that's sort of in, in test phase where I'm using it in test flight. And this is old OS. This was made by someone that actually redid the OS so that it runs within iOS 15. And as you can see, if I go into the iPod, turn it sideways, we even have cover flow. So they've implemented everything really well. And hopefully this will come out very soon. But as you can see, you can scroll between it, go into the weather app. It looks just like it did years ago. And they even have mail working. So you can use this fully if you wanted to. You can go into the old camera if you want to do that. And you have to allow access. And I just re-downloaded the new version. I had an older version on here. But you'll see here's the old camera app. And you can switch between video and photos. It even has an, a toggle for HDR on or off, which the iPhone itself doesn't. So it says HDR. I guess it's just a button, but not on. But you can go home and it looks just like it used to. So if you prefer the look of that, you can use it even with the old YouTube app. And so that's old OS. Again, it's in testing, so I can link that below, but all of the major apps that I cover, I'll link below. And then again, if we go in here, you'll see here's all the different apps I have. And typically what I do is I search for an app that I want to use. So maybe I want to use Call of Duty. I'll search for it using Spotlight Search or Cash App or anything from Contacts to... Well, really anything in here, all of the main pages I just tap on, but for the most part, I just search for things. You'll see all of the different Google apps, health, as we keep going. Again, another app I'm testing out is iEvent Timer. Oops, we'll go back. There's one right here. And again, I keep testing it out, but it's iEvent Timer. And we'll allow it there. And I installed this yesterday. There was an update and it shows different events, old events from all the different places. So it's pretty nice. And there's a bunch of different apps I like to test out from time to time. And as we go through all of my apps, you'll see, let's go up a little bit here. You'll see, I have quite a few and some I don't use all the time. Some I do, but this just automatically sorts them alphabetically. And I don't have to think about it. I use Rove for a slider that I have for filming Q manager, all of these things I don't necessarily use every day, but I still want to keep on my phone. And I know not everybody loves app library, but I really like it because it just makes it auto organized. I don't have to have pages and pages of a mess of apps and you'll see it's just very, very simple. So nothing particularly super exciting, the fly app. And then of course, the other things I've shown you as well. So I really like the old OS app as well. Now on iPad, my iPad is laid out similarly. Now recently, maybe recently within the past month or two, I've reset this and I had some issues with it. And so I re really need to 
change the layout of some of this, but you'll see many of the same sorts of apps. So the weather widget, but why there's no weather app from Apple, I'm not really sure, but there's a weather widget. Pixelmator, I use Pixelmator and Pixelmator Photo a lot because of maybe editing photos if I'm using my iPad. And then Ring for home cameras. And then I was trying out a game here, Port City Ship Tycoon. I haven't played it too much, but I always like those sorts of games. On the next page, you'll see I have a big widget from podcasts. It shows me all the latest podcasts and then also your typical Apple apps. HBO Max, of course, is not one, but your typical Apple apps are here and I need to reorganize this. On page three, I have some games or one game, Field Runners Attack, and also Xbox Cloud Gaming. So I've tried that out a little bit. It works pretty well, but nothing is terribly organized here, and I need to fix that. Another app I think is pretty neat is Sightscape. Sightscape allows you to use the LiDAR sensor on the back of your phone, and it uses that or on your iPhone to scan the area and build a 3D model of it, So, or a 3D point grid. So you'll see it's scanning now. If I move up here behind. Now, the more you do this, the more it sort of creates a detailed image. So it can take a while to do. You walk around a room. It's really great at mapping out a room and then giving you dimensions. So you can see this is all it's done in the short time I've been using it. But as you move it around, it gets more and more detailed. You can measure distances and more, and you'll see it's starting to build out what was behind my iPhone. There's a stand there with a pro display XDR, and it allows you to see what's going on. So it's really great. I've used it to scan rooms entire rooms in different houses and buildings. It works well for that. And I've been testing that as well from time to time. But all of these apps, like I said, I use the app library a lot to manage things. So I don't typically like to sort my apps. I just search for them. It's even how I use the Mac. I'll use Spotlight Search to find the app I'm working on, unless it's something I use regularly, which is listed down at the bottom. So let me know how you organize your iPhone and iPad in the comments below. And I'd really like to try some other games. Typically, I'll have Call of Duty on here. I'll use it with a controller and play that sometimes. But I don't play a ton of games on my iPad. I use it more for consumption, watching YouTube videos, occasionally writing notes, shopping and mail, and then other things such as a, an occasional game, but not too much. It's mostly a consumption or idea device, but let me know what apps you would recommend. Maybe I should change this home screen up. Do you have widgets that you use regularly that you find helpful? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below as I'd like to change this up this year. Let me know. And of course I'll link fly app in the description. Like I normally do be sure to check it out. And again, you can win that PlayStation or $200 gift cards. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.